Section 8.4, Multiplying and Dividing Rational Expressions. So simplified form. A rational expression is in simplified form if its numerator and denominator have no common factors. So let's take a look at exactly what this means. We're talking about factors. So hopefully we all can recognize as we look at this 9 twelfths, we all recognize that we can simplify that. And the reason we can simplify that is that we could rewrite 9 as 3 times 3, and we can rewrite 12 as 4 times 3. We can cancel out those common factors of 3, and we're left with 3 fourths. However, let's take a look at an example of a common mistake that people make, and let's take a look at an example of why you can't make this example, or make this mistake. So, what I'm asking you to remember is that a plus c over b plus c, we can't cancel out those common factors of c. But let's take a look at why. So let's look at 6 sevenths. We can all probably agree that we can't simplify 6 sevenths. But by this kind of logic up here, if you want to try to do this, we could write 6 as 3 plus 3, and we could write 7 as 4 plus 3. And if you want to try to do this whole canceling thing by canceling out those 3's, you would say that 6 sevenths equals 3 fourths, and we all know that that's not true. We can't cancel them, so 3 plus 3 has to stay 3 plus 3, and 4 plus 3 has to stay as addition. We cannot simplify 6 sevenths. So now let's take a look at what that means with algebraic rational expressions. We must factor first. In other words, we can't just cancel out those x's. That just doesn't work because we, there are in terms that are being added to another term, added or subtracted. So we can't do that, and instead we need to factor. So how does x squared minus 5x minus 6 factor? Hopefully you remember how to factor, and this will factor as x minus 6 and x plus 1. We still have x plus 1 on the denominator, and now we can cancel the common factors of x plus 1 on the top and x plus 1 on the bottom and we're left with x minus 6. This next example I'd like you to try on your own, but first of all, can we cancel out the x squared on the top and the bottom? Again, we cannot do that because there is addition in this. We're adding the x squared to something. It's not just being multiplied. If it was x squared times something with parentheses, then we could cancel them. So since we can't do this, we need to factor the numerator and factor the denominator. Now in case the denominator looks somewhat odd and you're not recognizing how to factor that, you should remember that this is the same as x squared plus 0x minus 4. And so now I'd like you to go ahead and do that, and we'll talk about that one in class tomorrow. Well, let's take a look at this next one. Again, we cannot cancel any of those x's in the numerator and denominator or any of the numbers because they're part of terms that are being added to another term. So we need to factor. So what can we factor out? What GCF on the numerator does x cubed and 4x squared both have in common? Well, they both have at least an x squared. When we factor that out, we're left with x minus 4. On the denominator, what does 2x squared and 4x have in common? Well, they both have a factor of 2, and then the x's, they both have at least 1x. We can factor out a 2x. And what are we left with? Well, 2x times x would give us 2x squared, and 2x times 2 would give us 4x. Now that we can compare our factors, on the numerator we have x squared is a factor times x minus 4. On the denominator we have 2, and we have x, and we have x plus 2. Well, remember that x squared is just x times x, so we can cancel out a factor of x on the numerator and denominator basically getting that denominator of 2 down to an, uh, sorry, an exponent of 2 to an exponent of 1. So then we're left with x and x minus 4 on the numerator, and 2 and x plus 2 on the denominator. Nothing else in that cancels. We don't have any other factors that we have in common. That is our answer. All right, now let's take a look at multiplying rational expressions. So the same rules apply for multiplying numerical fractions. You multiply the numerators, and you multiply the denominators, and then you simplify. So 1 half times 3 fifths, if I multiply across the numerator, three, 1 times 3 is 3, and across the denominator I get 10, so I get 3 tenths. And then if I could simplify that, I would. 
So we're looking at this first example, and it might be easier, first of all, to simplify each fraction. So first of all, 6 over 2 will simplify to 3 over 1. I have an x squared on the top and bottom, so they'll cancel each other out. Then the y squared on the top will cancel with two of those y cubes, so I'll be left with just a y on the numerator. The other fraction, 10 over 18, well, 2 divides into both of those, so I'll have 5 on the numerator and 9 on the denominator. There's no x's on the denominator to cancel, so I'll still have that x cubed. And then the y squared on the denominator will cancel with two of those y4s, so I'll be left with a y squared. Now, multiplying across the numerator and across the denominator, um, writing my numbers together, 3 times 5, I get 15. I have an x cubed, and then the y times y squared will give me y to the third. On the denominator, 1 times 9 is just 9, and there are no variables. We just need to look at this and see if we can simplify anything else. Well, we have 15 over 9 divided both by 3. We get 5x cubed y cubed over 3. All right, so this example had, there was, if you notice, there was no addition or subtraction. This was just all monomials being multiplied together. Now let's look at when we have some polynomial fractions being multiplied together. So the first thing we need to do is see if we can factor the numerators and factor the denominators. So the first numerator, x squared minus x minus 12, we can factor as x minus 4 and x plus 3. The other numerator, x, we could factor as x plus 4 and x plus 2. And then our denominators, well, we can't factor those, but we could write them together as two factors, so we just have one large fraction. And now we can see that we have common factors. We have an x plus 2 on the denominator and an x plus 2 on the numerator. They'll cancel. We have an x minus 4 and an x minus 4, so those cancel. So we're left with x plus 3 and x plus 4. This next example, I'd like you to give it a try, but the first thing I'd like you to do is change the problem in your note packet. So the first fraction is going to remain the same, 3x over x squared minus 5x plus 6. But then I'd like you to change it to being multiplied by 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. And so I'd like you to go ahead and do this problem, but I'd like to point out that you need to make sure that you realize that this second one is over 1, and that you're still going to need to multiply the denominator and multiply the numerator. Right, the numerator all is 1 big numerator, so 3x times whatever those factors will be. And be careful because remember that you have a coefficient of 2, so this one takes a little bit more to factor it. I'd also like you to give this next one a try. I'll get you started again a little bit on this one. If you notice that this first numerator has just two terms, but again, if we look at the 3x cubed and the 75x, what do both of those have in common? So we're going to be able to factor out a 3, and they also both have an x. So we'll be left with x squared minus 25, because 3x times x squared would give us the 3x cubed. 3x times the 25 would give us 75x. However, be careful, because you still need to factor that. Again, that can be written as x squared plus 0x minus 25. And then also remember that you're going to have to factor the denominator and factor that other numerator. And then you'll also have that factor of 6. And finally, let's take a look at dividing rational expressions. So dividing fractions, you'll need to remember, is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. It's important that you change the division to multiplication, and it's the second fraction that you, change, that you make the reciprocal of. So again, let's take a look at an example of this with numbers to refresh your memory. If I have 2 divided by 1 half, so that's like having 2 pies, and I cut them in half, then I end up with a total of four pieces, or four parts. Two, change division to multiplication, and the reciprocal of the second one, and I multiply those, I get four. Not to be confused with, if I have a half divided by two. So in other words, I have half a pie, and I cut that into two pieces. I basically have one-fourth of the whole thing. So one-half, change division to multiplication, and the reciprocal, and I get one-fourth. So it's important that you make sure that you're flipping the second fraction, not the first one. 
and the last example. So the first thing we need to do is rewrite this as a multiplication problem. So my first fraction stays the same, 3 over 4x minus 8, and I change it to multiplication, and I flip it. So x squared plus x minus 6 over x squared plus 3x. And now I go ahead and factor it. So I have 3 on the first numerator, nothing I can factor there. And I can factor x squared plus x minus 6 as x plus 3 and x minus 2. On my denominator, well, I can factor out a 4 out of that first one, and I'm left with x minus 2. And I can factor an x out of the second one, and I'm left with x plus 3. And now as I look for common factors, well, I have an x minus 2 and an x minus 2, and an x minus 3 and an x minus 3. And so I'm left with 3 over 4x. And I'd like you to try this last one in class also. Remember, first of all, that since there's not a fraction per se in the second term, what we're dividing by, you need to make it into a fraction because it's division. So it's over 1. And so when we rewrite that, we would flip it. And so it will be times 1 over. And then again, if you don't recognize how to factor that, remember that it's the same as x squared plus 0x minus 16. And then you still need to factor that second or that first fraction. If you have any questions, I'd really like you to come to class with some questions. And if you don't, um, please make sure you try to finish up those problems that I didn't do. And we'll start class by probably comparing those or putting some answers on the board. And we'll see you tomorrow in class.